guys. So spiral wraps are another one of those moves that are not terribly difficult to learn, but tend to be really good audience pleasers. They tend to have that same effect as when you're doing a buzzsaw, where the audience sees the fire come really close to contact with you, and it tends to be like, oh my god, look at that kind of moment, right? Um, I know a couple different ways of doing spiral wraps, and I'm going to do my best to teach both of them. The first one being, of course, that you wrap the uh, poi tethers around your hands, and the other one being the more glow spinner inspired move. Uh, you could also argue that it's kind of a meteor spinner inspired move where you have one of the poi wrap around your wrist and the other one wrap around your hand. I know people who actually do this, uh, perform this version of it where they have both poi wrap around their wrist, but I don't know. The way I prefer to do it is uh, to keep one on the hand and one on the wrist. But anyhow, how do you get these down? Um, let's start with the one where they both wrap around your hands, yeah? Um, now, when they wrap around your hands, there are two basic hand positions that I've seen as ways that people will do this. Um, and they tend to be what I would call the awkward turtle, where uh, both of your palms are pointed downwards or away from you, and you've got one thumb sticking out on either side of your hands, right? The other one is what I would call the prayer, wherein your palms are stuck together facing each other, and your thumbs are both pointed the same direction, right? Um, now, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but I, I, I do find that more often than not, people who hold their handles uh, in their hands like this, say between uh, thumb and first finger, uh, tend to prefer the awkward turtle for, uh, for their spiral wraps. And people who prefer, say, finger loops or anchoring their uh, handles between uh, their index and middle fingers like this tend to prefer uh, the prayer position. Um, me personally, I don't like the prayer position very much myself, but uh, I know a lot of people that do. It's also kind of awkward for me, but we'll, we'll ignore that for the time being. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so um, whether you prefer the awkward turtle or the prayer position, uh, this, is, th this is roughly how you would get either one of them down, and that's that you start in this position right here, uh, rather, this move right here, this is a corkscrew, of course. Um, I did a tutorial on how to perform the corkscrew, for those of you who don't know how to do it, which you can go check out and then uh, come back and learn the rest of this tutorial. Uh, for those of you who do know how to do it already, here's how you turn this into a spiral wrap. You're going to take that moment in which the poi are both rotating above your head, and if you're spinning clockwise, it'll initiate at that moment when your right hand poi is out past your right shoulder. If your dominant direction of spin is counterclockwise, it'll initiate when your left hand poise out past your left shoulder, uh, which is really the same position if you stop to think about it, except for the fact of the direction. Now, with clockwise being my dominant direction of spin, I usually like to start this with my left hand uh, essentially tagging the back of my right hand. And you'll note, as I do this, I am stretching my arms as far up as I possibly can. And I want to have just enough energy left on the poi that they keep on going and don't hit, say, the top of my head, but wrap around my forearms, yeah? And you'll note that as that happens, there will come to be a moment when they kind of tag my forearms, and then they'll automatically unwrap themselves, right? Um, this normally happens with uh, poi that are not stretchy, that is poi that, that are completely rigid. If you're using sock poi, sometimes you have to kind of pull your hands apart a little bit to initiate uh, that moment where they start to unwrap. Um, not always, though. Play around with it a little bit and see how it goes. But essentially what you're learning to do at this point is you're learning to take the poi in a position where they're rotating in split time, same direction, and getting them to wrap behind your hands, which is going to be crucial, or rather behind your fingers. Um, if you've got that down, it feels reasonably comfortable, you're going to switch what you're doing just slightly, and instead try doing a corkscrew uh, off at kind of an angle. See, the corkscrew I started uh, really dealt with a plane that was above my head and below my hands. Now I'm going to switch it up to a plane that is slightly diagonal, uh, say facing down in front of me, and one that's going slightly underneath my arms. This is also a great way to begin to practice inside moves, by the way. And again, I'm going to try and get it to the point where I can pop my arms out and get my poi to wrap around them. 
Now, unfortunately, gravity is not going to help you out anymore in this position, so you're going to have to learn how to forcibly unwrap the poi. The best way I've found to do this is, rather than just leaving, uh, say, your awkward turtle in a place where your hands are parallel with the ground, uh, you take that last bit of the move and actually tilt your hands over. And you'll find that if you tilt your hands, whoops, back to horizontal, you'll give the poi just a little bit of momentum to be able to come out of this move. And at first it's going to feel super duper awkward, but after a while you get a feeling for it. I, I would also point out that uh, this gets easier the less uh, free tether the poi have and the less they're kind of hanging off, right? So again, we go from this diagonal, we pop out our hands and let the poi wrap around. We kind of snap our hands back away from that point where they're wrapped up and the poi unwrap. Again, you want to practice this a few times to get a good feel for it. Snap it back, put a little bit of energy on it, right? Once that feels relatively comfortable, you're going to want to switch to a place where you're now dealing with vertical planes. So like, say, working between uh, different sides of a waist wrap. And again, if you don't know how to do it, I've got a tutorial on how to do it. You can come back when you've finished watching that. For those that do, what you're going to look for is that moment in between the two weaves and you're going to really kind of push your hands out just slightly so you can get the poi uh, to pop back behind your thumb joint. Yeah? And once that happens, the rest kind of takes care of itself. Again, you want to make sure that you've got enough energy for the poi to complete that wrap and then pop your wrists out to give them enough energy to exit. And you'd be surprised at how little energy it takes to actually make the poi come back out. It's a great example of, uh, of angular momentum at work, yeah? So once you've got that down, you can now just go straight back and forth between spiral wraps if you so desire. Uh, there's a lot of people who, if they're feeling really saucy, will just kind of let their poi hang out for a second and then pop out of the spiral wraps like so. Uh, you'll notice that if you do have a poi that's hanging down and is kind of doing a pendulum, you want to try and get the pendulum to reach as far over as possible before you kind of do that snap back, so like that. If you leave it hanging, it's not going to have enough momentum to get back over your hands, as you can see right there. Uh, now, if you happen to be the type that likes glow stringer inspired moves, um, here is how you can make that happen, which is to uh, decide which of your hands is going to be the one that's forward, and practice just wrapping the poi around that hand and then unwrapping it. And you'll find actually that the little kind of snap you do in your wrist to get it to unwrap will come very naturally if you use this method, yeah? Once you've got that down, what you're going to want to try and do is find a place where you can get your other hand relatively close to your wrist and get the entirety of your other poi wrapped around your wrist, yeah? What I find is that the closer you can get the two poi to each other as they go around your wrist, the more that snap is going to help you in getting both of the poi off, right? Um, it should be noted that really all the momentum for this has to come from whichever hand is forward. There's almost nothing your other hand can do to help you out. Once you've got it unwrapped a certain amount, you can pull with your other hand, and that'll help you get the poi off. But don't do it if you're already wrapped around your hand a few times. The reason being that it will only make it tighter. Like in this case right here, pulling at it is only going to cut off the circulation in my hand. Make sure that uh, you're at least at a point where the poi isn't coiled over itself anymore, and then you'll find that pulling it will actually do something. So, there you go. Two methods for spiral wraps. Uh, hope this is helpful to some of you guys out there, and uh, there's all kinds of fun places where you can stick spiral wraps if you want to get a little bit more exotic, say like around your shoulder, around your elbow, all kinds of stuff, you know? So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, have yourselves a great week. Peace.